Hey, everybody. Good morning. Hey, Linus, you there? Oh, no mic yet. Linus, you online yet? Yeah, hello. Hello. Do -do -do. Morning, Doug. Oh, hey, David. Antonio, are you there? Yes, I am. Yeah. Hello. I, I, this might be your first time on the call, correct? Yeah, it is. Yeah, if you want. I am part of the serverless workflow specification. Um, Timo told me that this is kind of a meeting where both group uh, discuss together. Yes. Teams, are you okay? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. This is it's great that you joined. Um, in the Slack, I'm sorry, not Slack. In the Zoom chat, if you'd like to mm -hmm. be associated with the company, can you just go ahead and put your company name in there, and then I'll just add it. If you don't want to be, that's fine too. Just in case. Uh, it is this okay? Yes, it is now. Okay. I guess it's mm, this is a small typo in my first oh. surname. Did I mess it up? I, I'm horrible at this. E, the E, that's, that's, that's that one. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, uh, Christian, you there? Hey, Doug. Hello. Jesse. Good morning. Hello, Lucas. Hello. Hello. And yo, Tommy. Yo. Yo. All right. Hey, Ginger. Hi. Oh, hey, Remy. Hi, Christoph. Hi, how are you? Good, how you doing? And Klaus. Hey, Doug. Hello. Hey, Doug. It's Ginger. I'm here. Just having yeah. audio problems. <laughs> that's okay. I, I heard some weird background noise. I heard that's good enough. <laughs> do, 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 do. Right. Hey, Manuel. Hi. Hey. 
Hi, Daniela. Hey there, how's it going? Good, how you doing? Good, good. Good. Oh, hey, Lance. Hey, how are you, Doug? Good, how you doing? Hello, Doug. Uh -oh. Hello, everybody. That was a big sigh. <laughs> Uh, it is, the, I don't know what's going on this week. It is absolutely awful in terms of meetings. I think it was spring break in the U.S., was it? Say that again? What was, was, was last week's spring break in the U.S.? I don't know. Um, it's we we kind of end up with, yeah, we end up with a rolling spring break. It kind of goes from like the end of March to the beginning of May. <laughs> Yeah, because it's, something happened that that it's like this week is completely jam packed from like uh, solid, solid, solid meetings. We usually don't have. Yeah, I don't know. With my son being at home from, from college or taking college from home, it's like I can't tell the difference between a spring break versus not. So, who knows? <laughs> uh, all right, Lucas, are you there? The other Lucas uh, I'm here. Yeah. All right, and Lou. Yes. Hi. All right. Cool. <clears throat> One more minute, then we'll get started. Doug, Doug, Doug. Hey, Scott. And Slinky, are you there? Yep. Cool. All right. Three after. Let's do this thing. All right, um, since you're on the call, Clemens, just a reminder, you have a couple of uh, AIs for you, as if you weren't busy enough, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, community time. Anything from the community people want to bring up that's not on the agenda? All right, cool. Um, we do have an SDK call scheduled after this one. Um, Scott, did you want to talk about that topic about the light of the... Um, the copyright thing or not? Yeah, sure. Um, I I was I was asked about copyright on the SDK in the Go the Go SDK code because someone wanted to take one of the functions and fork the code, but there was no copyright header on the file. So I was asking Doug, should we go through the trouble of adding copyright headers to all the files so that people can do things like fork? Does anybody have an opinion on that one? I I mean, technique is probably a good thing. I just don't know whether it technically matters that much. Clemens, you seem to have a legalistic type background in some, in some respect. Do you have an opinion on that one? Uh, sorry. Sorry. Um, so we need copyright headers in, this, in the source files for the SDKs. Um, uh, I don't know, um, actually, um, whether the, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Uh, whether that's important. Okay. So, so it's just happened. I'll put it right through the whole. I'm sorry, could say that again, Linus? Yeah, so I just happened to read through the whole GPL uh, FAQs and they strongly recommend to add licensing headers. Okay. Uh, Lucas, you came off mute. Did you have an opinion on this? Or not? Okay. We're, he said he said GPL, but we're Apache too in our stuff. Um, well, I think it does not depend. Yeah, yeah CNCF Council. For what okay. it's worth, uh, Apache two also recommends to use headers. Okay. Okay. We just haven't because uh, you know, um, it's just it's not something yeah. we did. Okay, let's put it this way. Oh, let's let's speed this along. Does anybody object to saying we should put a, a copyright header on the docs and the SDK folks can figure that out, whether it's the one that Scott put into the chat right now or a different one, the SDK folks can figure that out for themselves. But we should, the question before us is yes or no, should we do it? Any objection to saying yes? Okay, is that good enough for you, Scott? Yep, sounds good, I'll work up PR. Uh, 
Okay. Cool. Thank you, Scott. All right. Um, so I'll, I'll double check during the call, but if you have any other topics for SDK, go ahead and add it to the SDK doc itself. Otherwise, it will be a very short call. Um, nothing for the interrupt call. I think we had a very short call last week. Um, but if you are working on code there, please add your, if you have an endpoint, please add your endpoint to the end of that copy, um, to the end of the interrupt doc so we can start doing some testing as people come online. Um, KubeCon EU. Um, I have not looked at these links yet, unfortunately, to see what we need to do in terms of signing up, uh, but I think we still have a little bit of time. Uh, okay, Antonio, since I don't see Timur on here, is there anything you want to mention from the SDK side of the, I'm sorry, the uh, workflow side of the house that people might be interested in knowing? Uh, no, no, no. Sorry, I don't have anything to bring here. Okay, that's fine. We'll just keep on moving then. Okay. Um, PR process. So unfortunately, I did reach out to um, a, a grant um, about how we were heading towards Scott's proposal. Um, he never actually responded to me, so I don't have a definitive answer, but I suspect he probably doesn't care so much about the process based upon his previous comments. I think he's just more interested in making sure we have some sort of human readable release notes type documentation and the actual mechanism to get that. I don't think he cared too much. So I'm inclined to say that we go with Scott's proposal that we tentatively agreed upon last week. Does anybody view things differently? Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. So Scott, um, will you take the steps necessary to do whatever's, or, to get us access to the tooling or to put the tooling someplace in our repos or, or yeah, 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 we can, we can do all of this um, magically. So I make it, maybe I'll make an issue and assign it to myself. Okay. Okay. I'll start with spec and then, you know, we can negotiate with all the other SDKs. Cool. Thank you. All right. All right, cool. Um, before we jump into the PRs, any other any other um, topics people want to bring up that we need to talk about? Um, I just was struck by what Scott just said about um, negotiate with all the other SDKs. Um, is it important that we all have the same process or if the end result is the same, is that okay? Because like we already have a process with the JavaScript SDK that does exactly what we're talking about. That is a very good point. I believe most of the discussions we had up until now were focused on the spec repo itself. So that's a great question. Yeah, it's, I, that's why I said negotiate, not dictate. There you go. Okay, just want to make sure. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I was just reading John's comment. All right. Um, okay, any other topics to bring up before we jump into PRs? All right. Uh, John, do you want to talk about this issue or do you, are you unable to come off mute? Okay, <laughs> we'll wait. Tell you what, um, Clemens, oh, hold on a minute. Uh, John, I'm sorry, say it again? It's all good, keep going. Well, I was gonna say, John, how long are you gonna be? Because um, as long as you can eventually come off mute at some point, I'll just defer this. Okay. Let's wait, let's wait on that one then, because there were some changes there and I just wanted somebody to talk to the changes to make sure people are aware of them before we approve it. Um, okay. John should do that. Yeah, I'd rather have John do it too. All right, so let's move on to Jem's issue since Jem, I just noticed you're on the call, cool. This will be a very quick section though, because I haven't really had a lot of time to look at this on a three. Okay, well, that's, that's fine. We can say nothing, move on if you want, but go yeah, ahead and I say think what you be, want to say. No, I, I think that's simpler. Yeah, I, um, I, I had a go at this on Friday uh, and I need, I think I've, when I stopped thinking about it actively, I think I had some ideas. So um, I will try and get those in for next week or at least okay. get a PR updated, yeah. Okay, cool. I, okay. I did have one question for the group. I mean, obviously um, I, I've been, uh, trying to do an XML schema for this uh, because you know a lot of tooling would understand that. Um, but I think what we're 
or, or from the guidance from the group last week, what I'm trying to do is not really very schema friendly. Yeah, so I'm wondering um, if there's an opinion about you know ditching a schema and just making it just a convention. Yeah, you know, so almost like a old school XML document where there's really no, uh, it's just a document with an expected shape, uh, but no specific schema that you could use to validate it. So I'll toss that one out there. Or does anybody care given it's XML? <laughs> anybody have an opinion on that? So Jesse says a schema would be good in the chat. Yeah, yeah. I, I personally would never use it, but I do think in general, a schema is a nice idea to have. Yeah, I mean, it, it has advantages, obviously, because you can just jack spear and, you know, you've got a lot of um, code gen tools available. Um, it's uh, when you get into using any's, um, I think the value of a schema sort of degrades a little bit. Um, but uh, I, I say part of this may be it's so long since I've done schema design that some of the constructs I'm trying to use either don't exist or I've forgotten how to do it. So. Okay, Clemens, did you want to say something? You came off mute. If you if if we're breaking into jail and we're doing the XML thing, then we need to do it right. Okay, so I'm not. I'm hearing most people say, "Go for it." Okay. Yes. All right. Thanks, team. Okay. Thank you, uh, Slinky. You are up. Let's see what this one's been. Mm -hmm. There you go. This looks short. Okay. Yeah, nothing to say here. Anyone questions, comments on this one? Looks straightforward. I gotta sworn you had this one already, or is this maybe I'm just never mind. No, uh, well to, to be honest, the all, most of the built-in functions in the first draft were were drafted. So Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I'm 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 slowly chasing up and figuring out what we need, what we don't need. So Okay. Expect to repairs like that. Okay. All right. Any questions, comments, concerns? Any objection to approval? Cool. Easy. I love easy ones. All right. Next one. Yeah, I moved this one up because I think it's trivial. Uh, so this. Um, so this is a. Let's say. Uh, the bootstrap of the TCK. It includes a readme which explains how to use each file. And then I've extracted the files, uh, the test cases that I've created in the reference implementation, and I posted it there. So that's it. They okay. should be all correct. If they are not, well, yeah, point it out. <laughs> Okay. I believe this has been out there for a little while anyway. Um, so any questions on this? Okay, any objection to approving? All right, wow. 18 file change approved, easy. All right, moving forward. And is this uh, slinky or is this yours too? Yeah, so yeah, I'm sorry to, to capitalize this. No, no, it's, it's all good. <laughs> so, uh, so, so I, I, um, I started looking a bit in the subscription CPI uh, to also see how we can fit the uh, expression language uh, in the subscription API. And there, there are some oddities that are found in the filtering. This is one of the first ones. So, what we are doing here is that we are basically claiming that. Uh, we are basically imposing uh, an implementation restriction uh, when you're implementing the filtering logic. And I think this is too restrictive and logically not correct. So I propose to remove this restriction and just keep it simple without oh. defining, without um, um, putting a strong constraint on the order of the evaluation. So if I remember correctly, this included, yeah, so I, okay, hold on a minute. I had a comment in here. Okay, 
Yeah, I was worried. Mm. I was worried about the and case, right? I thought if you do some really weird stuff like this, yes, you'd get you'd get you'd get incorrect results. Yeah, that was the, the short circuiting is 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 the motivation was the motivation for this. Take a look, we read it. So in, in in most in most programming languages, um, as soon as the, and as soon as you are reaching the point where you can no longer can um, uh, uh, reach the, the desired result, which means the, the outcome can no longer be true, you abort, which means you, you short short circuit. But for short circuiting. You need to have you need to have the, the you need to have the order. So uh, just as in C, C sharp, JavaScript, etc., um, the order of conditions in in a conditional statement matters. This is the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now I recall. Now I recall. Yeah, and the answer is that this this is my this in my opinion is incorrect for this kind of language because this language is more like a JSON schema. So in JSON schema, it doesn't matter the ordering. Of the evaluation of the keywords, and in my opinion, this is the very same because uh, you uh, first of all looking at our filters dialects that we have today, there is never such condition like the one that you they, uh, that you explain here, and second, it's because you don't have um, you can never have failures in a filter or at least in the ones that we have defined today. But, but I can I can have I can have I can have uh, ten filter uh, ten ten conditions that are, that are with an all clause, and I put the I put the cheapest one on top. Well, yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly where I wanted to go. I want the I, I want my filter implementation to be able to put the cheapest one on top. I, I, that, that's exactly my point. With, with this constraint, you are limiting. Uh, the optimization so in the filter implementation. I may not have wrote, written this correctly, but I, it seems to me you could write something like this, where something's going to evaluate something's going to evaluate to an error, which implies, I believe, false. But something up front may have blocked you from even evaluating that error, that would have caused the whole thing to end up being true. Mm -hmm. But you can you can't express that in, in this language, in, the, in 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 our filtering dialects in our filtering let's let's name it filtering language okay, mm -hmm. in our filtering language you can't have such conditions and you don't have the concept of errors, so this this can never happen. We may not have the concept of errors, but that isn't that because all errors map to false. No. No, we, we, here we are, we are not talking about the, the expression language here. Here we are talking about the subscription filters. And in the subscription filters, we don't, we don't even have the concept of substring or, or, we don't, or in general, we don't have any um, concept of some filter that can fail, okay? All, all our filter dialects are defined to succeed and give you a, return, uh, a value, which is either true or false. Right, so, but I guess I'm, OK, so I wrote this as a single filter expression, but couldn't you have split these across two different filters and then join them together with the concept of an AND filter and then run into the exact same problem? Well, then you need to define the concept of error because you have substring. Substring is, is an operation that can fail. So you first need to go through defining the concept of error or at least specifying that errors equals to false and the filter can, can fail. So a filter can generate a side effect that, that means an error. But we don't have such concept because I, and, I, and I guess the reason is that we don't need that. I mean, what we need in the subscriptions filters is something very easy, like, um, um, I mean, we, we just need error, uh, we just need, dialects that returns either true or false. And then uh, inside the dialect, like for example, in the expression language, we can have more complex constructs like errors and stuff like that. 
I, I personally would like more time to think about this because it, it mm -hmm. hurts my head to think that we're going to toss out all programming language, all programming languages that have this notion of order, a precedence order, and we're tossing that out and saying, eh, it doesn't matter. That just feels but, so wrong to me. <laughs> schema languages doesn't have this concept. Yeah, but it's, this is not a schema language, right? This is a, this is a, this is a logical expression. So, so a schema language is, is very different. That's a, a schema language, and that's true for both um, uh, um, XSL as well as it's true for for JSON schema is more akin to a functional language where you're doing effectively and, and in JSON schema most pronounced where you're doing effectively pattern matching against um, of, of, a, of a schema object against candidates and then you potentially end up with a match but that's very different here we have a here we are literally have a programming construct um, which is um, um, a, a DS a river rules DSL here that's not that's not this that, that's that's not the same as as, as schema well, I, 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 to be honest, I think uh, it's more like a schema than a programming construct, because then the programming construct is something that you can have inside the dialect, which gives you all the power you want to express complex expressions. But, but, but it's a, it's, it's an it's it's, it's, filter has to be simple. Yeah, but it's a, it call it causes it causes a logic graph, just like a like a like any any uh, expression that you can formulate in in, in, in JavaScript. Or in Java, or in SQL, or, or wherever else. I mean, you get you get a, you get a tree of logical expressions, and and I would say that, uh, and I think that tree needs to be predictable anywhere and everywhere where it runs, and it has needs to have the same order. So, Linus, you can us mute for a second there. Did you want to join in? Mm -hmm. uh, so with the programming language, which is it's like the order matters because like what you put in the in the if statement or whatever can have side effects. So you have this order and then it, it stops at some point if like the first thing uh, evaluates into false. But I think in this case, we're just interested in the end result and we can't, can't have side effects. So the order doesn't really matter. We could even like evaluate this different statements in parallel and then like merge them together later. And I, yeah, I agree that we shouldn't constrain the evaluation engine to, to uh, evaluate them in order, but makes sense to evaluate like the cheap, cheap statements first. And then if there is like an regex or something, which is more expensive, like we can postpone it to be sure that all the cheap comparisons are positive or true. Yeah. The, the way how these composites work, right? So there's all and any. They can they can take all filters. Right? So the filters that we have so far are simple. Um, but they might quite well we might quite have quite well have filters in the future or someone else might have a filter um, uh, extension that has side effects, that does, for instance, a lookup to a reference database. And, and then um, I, really, I want to be in control whether the lookup on, to the reference database happens um, after I have checked the precondition. So I think the same is true as for any other programming language. It's a logic tree. Slinky, your hands up. I think the kind of use case that you have described, Clements, fits far better the expression language itself. So when you use the dialect uh, of the expression language, uh, you can extend the built-in functions of the expression language, and you just have to use uh, use the expression language, and uh, so you have more expression power. Expression power, yeah, more, yeah, more expressivity, uh, and. And, and, and I think it just leads to a better result. And, and I'm going to give you an, uh, an example of, let's say, an optimization that I can do to implement the subscription API. So assume that, for example, uh, my messaging system uh, indexes by, I don't know, 
by the cloud events type. And I'm able to, uh, and when I read messages, I can just get the, the mess. Um, I, I, I define the filter having, I don't know, some, some dialect before, some dialect after, and then in the middle I have type equals to something. What's the point uh, um, of, of, of doing the evaluation in order in that case? Because I, are, I have already indexed and I already get the messages by type. So that's an example of how I've implemented filtering just without following the, the, um, uh, the ordering. Um, so, so I'm wondering whether it'd be more useful to have people write concrete examples into this PR that would break if we remove this requirement. And that way we're not talking in the abstract. Okay. Would that be okay with you, Slinky? Yeah, sure. Because I, I, the way you guys have described this is interesting to me, and it's not a way that I personally have thought about before. I, I, my mind was definitely stuck in programming language constructs. And the things you guys have said had made me rethink this, and I'd love to, to work through the process but with, with concrete examples to see, because you know, if I can't come up with one that actually fails and that the and order actually matters, then, then yeah, then maybe it's not that big a deal. I just, I just need to walk through it a little more based upon what you guys said today. So let's, let's get some concrete examples in here that would fall apart if we adopted this PR and that will help us to make it a, a decision, I think. Okay. So let me make a comment here. Okay, Oop. make it clear it's for everybody. Not, not Slinky, since he likes it already. All right, anything else on this one people wanna bring up? All right, cool. Um, hold on a second here. Do, 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 that one. All right, Lionel opened up this one last week and I believe it's just typos, let me see. Yeah, so just, yeah, missing an O, subscription is misspelled, wait. Yeah, missing an S or the SB evaluates. Yeah, these are just simple little typos and get rid of trailing spaces. Anybody see anything weird in here that I don't see that is a mistake for his mistakes? Nope. Okay, any objection to approving? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I like easy ones. All right, another slinky one, cool. Always brings up exciting ones. All right. Slinky, you wanna introduce this one? Yeah, so I, 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 I think there, um, there were some misunderstandings of the error handling. So I just, uh, so I, re I rewrote a bit that part of the, the spec. And I also added that to reference implementation just to show what's my idea around this. So my um, uh, so my thinking is that um, the expression language can be evaluated into uh, an expression can be evaluated in two modes. The first one is the fail fast mode. So when an error triggered, it, it just interrupts and records the error, and that's it. And the second evaluation mode is the evaluation mode where you continue. Um, the evaluation, and at the end you have a list of eventual results, and you have an and you have the result. Uh, so you have the result, and you have a list of eventual errors that happened while executing the the expression. And I make very clear that the mode that must be supported is the fail fast mode. So, which is how most systems works, and that's it. So. That, 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 that I, 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 I did this PR because uh, last time we speak about that, I felt like uh, there were some misunderstandings, misunderstandings about that, so. Okay, anybody have any questions on this one? Well, do we have a, do we have a definition for what is the, the result of a failed um, um, 
It's partial expression. Yes, we always have in every single bit of the spec. I was very careful to add that. Okay. <laughs> and the, the so short answer to that question is the, the answer is false, right? Sorry? The, the short answer to Clement's question is yes. And the answer is that when it's used as a filter expression, the an error implies false, correct? Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, it, yeah always. So, so it can happen that you have a, um, that you have an error, but still come out with true because it's just a branch that has a false, that has an error. Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, every so every every time you see in the spec that there is uh, there is a, a, an operation that can fail, uh, a built-in or a casting or whatever, uh, it's it's defined what's the the result of the expression. Okay. Uh, so you can uh, and the complete evaluation mode, it's something that uh, can be useful for doing complex error handling and, and stuff. Yeah. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the TCK, uh, if you go back to the PR of the TCK, one moment, so uh, because it also explains well this, this, this concept. Yeah, exactly. Uh, go, okay, you see that there, uh, there is a, a list of types of errors that can happen while you are evaluating the, the, the expression. And depending on the implementation, you can be specific about the errors or not. Um, so that doesn't matter very much. And if you go below, uh, go for example, below, below, below. Stop, stop. No, go below, <laughs> sorry. Below, below, below. Uh, math operators should, uh, yeah, math operators. Okay, the last one, line uh, 57. So line 57, tells you implicit casting with invalid string value. When you do an implicit casting and, um, and you're casting from a, a, an integer, so from a string to an integer, uh, if it fails, it returns, to you, uh, it returns to zero. So this expression evaluates to 10 because it's zero plus 10, uh, but, it, uh, but it, uh, it needs to raise an error telling, hey, there was a cast error, so mm. that's it. And, yeah. and, then the, and then again, depending on, on the kind of engine you are going to, you are implementing, uh, you can either always return the result or you, can, or you don't return the result and you just uh, throw the exception. And yeah, if, if you want, uh, you can also show the, the, Java, uh, the Java interface I posted in the, in the PR. That clarifier rambling. Description of clarifier handling. Yeah, this one. That link. Yeah, one sec. Okay, yeah, yeah, expression. Below, below. Yes, expression. Expression has two methods. One always returns the result, and result is a, is a type that contains uh, the actual result and and the error and the, and an eventual list of errors and then there is the try evaluate which just fails as soon as there is an error. I'm um, I have I'm torn on this one. Um, so I like I like the fact that the, you have very clear well defined semantics for when it fails and that you have a. There's always a defined result, and that you were that you return the result and an error together. That I think that's um, um, that is intellectually pleasing. Mm -hmm. um, so I like that. Um, I'm what I'm worried about, or what I'm struggling with, is how do we use that? So so I have a messaging engine that is doing filtering. How does how does that cope with how does that cope with error? Meaning, meaning now I have a filter result. I have a filter result, and the filter result is true. But there has been an error thrown. What am I going to do? Do I have to write now another rule set that says? 
right? So, so what are what are we going to do with that? What's the what's my what? How am I going to react to this? So my, my the use case that I had in mind for this in specific was uh, when you do templating. So you want to use the expression language uh, to, for example, write a template of an extension uh, based on the other pieces of the of the event. Okay. Uh, in that case, for example, returning always a result is something that may be reasonable. What do you mean with template? Sorry? What, what do you mean with template? Uh, I'm not talking about the filtering use case. As I, said, as I said many times, for the filtering use case, fail fast mode, if an error happens, it, then it's equal to false, and that's fine. But because I, I want to keep the language not tied too much to, to, to filtering, um, because, because I don't want uh, I don't want to have this uh, the language strongly tied to the to the filtering. I believe this kind of evaluation mode uh, may be useful for templates for templating. So uh, when uh, again when you want to um, write a template for an extension, uh, and you do what does that template do? So I'm I'm what. what... I'm just I'm I'm maybe I'm confused what the, the what the, where do we have templates? I mean you write an expression uh, to define a value of an extension. That is totally reasonable because the language can return true, can return false, can return a string, or can return an int. Yeah, I don't I don't know what you're referring to. Like I, I, we have expressions for filters, but I don't know what I don't know what the template is in your head. So what what I mean with template is, yeah, template maybe it's the wrong word for that. Uh, what what I mean is that, for example, um, an event processor that is able to modify the event based on an expression. Okay. Does that make more sense for you? Um, there's able to modify it. Well, we, but would that have to, wouldn't that have to yield? Um, so that doesn't yield true or false that use a, that yields any number of, of, of um, uh, that yields a, any value. Yes, the language already returns any value inside its type system. So either a Boolean, uh, an integer, or a string. OK. Um, we don't have a use case for that, though. Like so in cloud events right now, we don't have a use case for, we don't have a use case for, for that mode. So just to expand on this, I don't think this is outlandish because um, we have in, in, our pro in our product in, in service bus, we have actually the notion of filters paired with actions where if a filter condition matches, then you can run an expression, then you can run a, um, uh, a statement that might then go and modify um, individual properties on the message with an expression Mm -hmm. But that is bigger than that. There's actually more to this than 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 the expressions here because we then you then have to have some extra syntax, which um, um, allows you to go and, and actually modify modify properties and select them, etc. So I, I think I think I think that mode here, that extra mode here, is is not sufficient. But but we. So, so that's the, 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 so I understand where you're going. I'm just struggling with the use case because we don't have a mechanism where we can go and plug that in, plug that into it. It's, it's, it's filling a, a requirement that we as a project don't have. If, if you, 
I have, I have a different question, but I'm not sure if you guys are done with your thread or not. <laughs> I'm, 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 I have, so uh, let me, let me be quick. I have, I, I think this is elegant. I think this is interesting. I, I just don't see what that, what that hooks up to. Well, let me ask my question because I'm not, I, this, this may sidetrack your, your concern. I, I have two, I have two questions. One is this, this right here. In fact, it says fail fast mode must be supported. It seems to me that's an implementation choice, isn't it? Sorry? You see right here that the fail fast mode must be supported by the evaluator. Yes. Isn't that an implementation choice? Because if I, if I choose to code up an evaluation implementation, whether I do a full evaluation or a fail fast evaluation, the user of my code should not know the difference as long as they get the right results. Right, so it seems odd to me that a spec would mandate that I have to do fail fast mode. Well, um, the user knows about that from the interface in the programming language where it's using the evaluator. Okay. Oh, we are so talking about this kind. Of, we are talking about this kind of user. We are not talking about the filter user. Okay. So, so you're saying that in your in your spec here someplace, you say there's a flag or something that says use fail fast versus complete. No, no, I'm, I'm, saying, uh, I'm saying that my programming language interface tells me which is the mode. Uh, I really think it should be the implementation choice. Like, I don't understand why we try to enforce the, what it results, apart from what you define that uh, if there is an exception, it should be considered as false. So from the higher level, but in my opinion, that part of the spec is too deep into the technical part. And I don't think you should mandate that because depending on the language, there is stuff that will be done more easily. Like in Go, it's more traditional to give back the error. In TypeScript, you will raise like, and I don't think you should mandate that because depending on the language, it's more natural to certain language or others, like the way they manage uh, exceptions and error. So if I were you, I would not put that. I like the like the previous PR. This one I think is a bit too too deep into the implementation compared to what we are trying to achieve. In my opinion, of course, just my okay. Linus, your hands up. Yeah, so for me, it boils down to the question if we specify the um, CESQL language or if we specify like the implementations, like with the SDK. So if we want to specify how, how people should implement it or if we just want to specify what the language should do. Because if you just specify what the language or how, how the language should behave, it doesn't really matter like if it fails fast or not. It's like in the end, it should produce the same result. And then, yeah, I agree that it's very implementation detail. And I'm not sure if you want to specify this on the on this level. Okay, let's link it, your hands up. Slinky, you, you still there? Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, now we can. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, uh, let me ask something to you two then. Uh, without line three, five, eight, wouldn't be better. So I just, uh, so just take it as a recommendation more than as you must do that. Does that make sense? I, whether it's a recommend for me, if you change it to like a, a non-normative statement that says, hey, it's a good idea for you to support both modes. Um, I, I'm okay with that. I don't think the spec should try to mandate a particular implementation choice though. Okay. And, but the other question I had was up here, you say they must always return a value. And then down here you say without any result. So I guess my question for you is when you say return a value, is the word value here the same as result or a value here mean it could be an error. Uh, 
the previous sentence the the previous sentence was wrong in my opinion so it was just plain wrong because it was mandate it was basically mandating the complete evaluation mode which in my opinion is wrong so uh, this this one is a bit more relaxed but, yeah, but in that's... general um yeah I, th I think that if we remove the line 358 it becomes just more suggestive no, 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 no. Maybe I didn't, maybe it wasn't clear. Wait, I think you have an inconsistency. You say they must always return a value, but then mm -hmm. down here you give an example where it doesn't return a result. And in my mind, I, I equated the word result and value to be the same thing. So here you're saying you always have one, and here you say you may not have one. So it seems inconsistent. Yeah, I'm using them interchangeably. Maybe I should stick with just one term. Well, even if you, but if you change, if you use one term, that that'd be good. I agree, but then you're inconsistent because here you say always, and then you say bait down here without. So definition doesn't mean the definition doesn't mean the, uh, the uh, that the evaluator needs to return that value. That is the difference. Uh, here I'm saying on line three five two. I'm saying a, the the language is expr is is, is defined like that. Okay, so there is a there is such definition. But then you don't need to, to, um, to actually evaluate and return that. Oh, God. I'm sorry. Okay. I was reading it wrong. They which, define which a value. Simply, OK. It's yeah. the word define yeah. as opposed to return. Got it. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah which was exactly my point. Uh, yeah. I apologize. I just wasn't reading it properly. OK, ignore me. All right. Remy, your hands up. Yeah, I remember we could use and sorry for before. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just like I really again like um, for me the whole PR is kind of uh, trying to enforce some stuff on um, implementation more than what the language should be because my understanding was if there is an exception basically it's false on your expression if I simplify like oversimplify maybe so whatever happens behind the scene should be the implementation choice like if you want to have a try catch that's a return false in your catch and so you use all the like uh, normal try and catch like padding of your language or if like in go you return an error and that means that you throw away the result and it should be your implementation like but what you are really trying to define in my opinion was when I subscribe, what can I input? What can I expect from the language on the behavior standpoint? But really, the what the API returns, like how it's implemented, at that point, like I, I don't care on my side. So I don't think uh, we should be that specific. But yeah, that's my uh, go ahead. I think uh, you raise your hand. <laughs> It's yeah, okay. then I'm going to ask another question. Are we okay with removing the pre? I mean, if we don't want to accept this one, even without remove, even uh, with removing the normative sentence, uh, the alternative is that we need to remove the previous sentence because the previous sentence, as I said, is plain wrong. In my opinion. I, I, if it was me, I would not even merge the PR, uh, to be honest. Because I understand what you're trying to, I, like it's a good, uh, it's a funny implementation, like uh, it's uh, maybe a good idea. But like uh, if I was coding it in TypeScript, I would probably tell you like uh, when there is an exception, it's going to be logged uh, <laughs> and in a way, or I'm going to raise the exception, but I'm not going to do any of that things. No, 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 sorry, Rami, we misunderstood. Uh, okay, I meant, my bad. Um, so if we don't want to accept this PR, even uh, even removing the the normative sentence, I think that we should remove the sentence that I'm changing here completely. So ah, okay. the, the lines in red, because for me these are plain wrong. Yeah, then I yeah I do agree with you. So either we accept this one, removing the normative sentence, or we just remove the old sentences too. Yeah. I would have just removed the sentence 
And you can probably keep it in your own implementation as uh, explaining how you did it. Because like when I read your code, uh, it, it was clear to me like what you were trying to achieve on your side. Because um, the thing is, I'm not saying that what you did is wrong. I'm just saying that I don't think it belongs inside a, a specification. Okay, okay, so I'll leave it up to you. Oh, Eric, your hands up, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I've been kind of head scratching around this language uh, because it, it's, anyway, I, I, and I wanted to share some thoughts. Um, I, one of the things that seems to me uh, potentially causing some confusion that a lot of us work in kind of cloud and uh, user facing or some, some kind of software like that and, and a lot of the ideas that are uh, being brought up in this context uh, seem to come from what I've observed in system programming or real-time operating systems where, you know, part of the specification is that this method must return within, you know, some a period of time, you know, in milliseconds or whatever it is. And um, that there's, a, there's a really big problem in that if, uh, if those are that is those are parts of your requirements, you really need the code to be formulated in a way that doesn't you know trigger exceptions or do anything like that. And um, uh, this is just me trying to make sense of why this thing has got some of the constraints on it that it does. Uh, it, 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 you can go one way. You can go from uh, code that satisfies this kind of style of API and doesn't raise exceptions, always continue, you know, return something uh, to a code, kind of uh, another layer and uh, SDK or something that turns those errors into exceptions or something like that. So it's easy to go that way. It's really much harder to go the other direction. And, and so the, the utility of specifying, I'm, I'm trying to steal man a little here, the utility of specifying, specifying all these kind of constraints and strange requirements is that it means that these SDKs then can be used in a larger set of contexts. Um, I don't know, maybe that's just blathering and not very useful, but it's a thought I've had to help me make sense of the whole conversation. Okay. I'm thank you about so how do you want to proceed here? Because I think it, if nothing else, I think there's general agreement to remove this, right? Do you want to think about whether you want to replace the text versus just remove the text and then come back next week? Or do you want to vote on, right? Do you want to vote right now on, on at least keeping this and just dropping this, this text right here? I don't know. What do you suggest? It, <laughs> I mean, it's up yeah, to I'm you. Fi I'm, fi I'm fine with whatever, uh, whatever people want. So. I mean, do, do you see value in this text or is it more important to you that you just want to get rid of these lines in red? So for sure, we need to get rid of these lines in red. That's for sure. Uh, I think this one is, again, is a suggestion, but uh, if as Remy said, we don't want to give this kind of suggestions, then that's fine for me. Okay. So let me pick on some people who spoke up. I'll pick on Clemens for a second. Well, Clemens, you had some concerns about this. If we got rid of the lines in red, <clears throat> and that's the only thing we did, we just completely ignored the stuff in green, would that address any of your concerns? Would you be okay with this? Um, yeah, I would, because the, um, the, I think I think how you evaluate the, the the language and and whether you are okay or not with um, with partial completion is something that is that is application specific. Okay. So let me ask that question then. Is there anybody in the call who would object to approving the PR if if the PR was just to remove the stuff in red, and nothing none of the green text? Linus, your hands up. Yeah, so just I have an additional suggestion. So maybe we could just start that section with implementation suggestions or something. And add, add these two there. These two like fast mode and complete evaluation mode. What do you think about that, Slinky? That's fine. Well, I, I yeah. This this particular uh, section, I wanted it to be 
something like a suggestion section. But yeah, uh, I can do that in another PR and then we discuss about that. So, so you'd rather get this PR in with, with just the stuff removed and then do another PR with the suggestion section? Yes. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, okay. yes. Okay, so that's yeah, I think the suggestion section is kind of useful, maybe. Yeah, it's like a mini primer, yeah. 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 Um, okay, so I think the suggestion in front of us is for this PR, just adopt the removing the red text, and then Slinky will, will think about creating a separate PR with a suggestion section where this new text may appear. That's the proposal in front of us. Any okay. questions? Go ahead. No, okay, okay. I said okay. Okay. Any questions about the proposal? Any objection to doing that? Okay. So let, I'll, I'll write up in the minutes that we're, we're accepting the deletion of the red stuff and the green stuff will, will not be part of the PR. Okay. Now, since we're almost out of time, I want to go back to John's issue. Since John, you said you can talk now. Hello. Can you get it done in four, three minutes is the question. I, well, I, potentially, it sort of depends on Clemens really. Um, so there have been some changes uh, to the PR. They're probably smaller than they look because of text wrapping. Um, I, I apologize, in, in future I will try to not bother rewrapping text uh, to minimize changes as we go and then maybe rewrap at the very end. Um, the changes in the PR do not affect the semantics at all. They are merely, hopefully, making things clearer. Um, if anyone uh, wishes to say they make things less clear, then uh, I'm completely happy to, to go back to things. Um, Doug, you had a comment about the, the paragraph just in the middle there, um, which is now when decoding an HTTP message into a cloud event, any HTTP header value must first be unescaped with respect to double quoted strings as described in, etc. Does that seem clearer to you than it was before? Yes, it does. Thank you. Yes. Excellent. Clemens, um, I'm now, I've slightly lost track of all the comments that you had, but I, I think in the paragraph just above, that was one of your unresolved concerns uh, where I've now put the resulting string should not be further encoded and then a rationale that sort of was effectively what was there before. So I did want to explain why we're not double quoting um, escaping because it's not necessary when you've done the percent encoding. Yeah. Okay. In which uh, case, where did the, uh, the, the current stuff land? Sorry, the, the which stuff? The parenthesized comments were somewhere. Uh, yes, um, I've still got HTTP headers for cloud events, cloud event attribute values do not support parenthetical comments. So the initial unescaping only needs to handle double quoted values. I think anyone following the link to RFC 2730 will understand why that's mentioned. Um, yeah. I sort of don't want to make too much of something that we're saying, don't worry about X. Um, if it takes a whole paragraph to explain what X is, then <laughs> it's um, slightly. Yeah, it's just, it's just a parenthetical comment that I think my reaction to that was simply that um, um, I wasn't like that didn't mean anything to me until I went back to the to the RFC to look at it. Yeah, um, um, I understood. It's just if we take a while to explain what parenthetical comments are only to say, by the way, we don't we don't care about them. If you have any suggestion for a better way of um, expressing it concisely, that would be great. Um, no, I don't. So yeah, I think you, you've done a good job there. Thank you. And of course, okay. um, if we're happy with the semantics, we can perform any clarifications later on. Sure. No, it's all good. Yeah, so I my, my gut reaction is, I agree with you, you didn't change the semantics, it was more wordings, wordsmithing more than anything else. Um, while we could technically wait a whole other week, I suspect nothing will change between now and then. However, what I'd like to do is to get see if the group is okay with approving this today conditionally but wait until end of tomorrow so that people can do another round of checks and if they have raised any concerns at all in the pr then we'll hold off to merging till next week um so basically a conditional approval with one more day of review if that's okay that'd be fine by me 
Okay. Does anybody on the call object to that? And please speak up if you want more time. I don't think there's any real rush to get this in. It has to be, you know, this week kind of thing, but it has been out there for a little bit of time. And I don't want to, I don't want John to have to hold on to it long because I know you're anxious to get this in for other reasons. Um, I've so actually merged the C sharp code, given that people seem to be happy with semantics. I've merged the C sharp code. Um, okay. Anyway. Okay, good. Okay, any objection then to conditionally approving with one more day of review possible for people? So end of day tomorrow. Last chance, otherwise we're gonna be approved. All right, cool, thank you all, hold on. Approved again. Okay, cool. All right. In that case, tech, whoa, that was not what I meant to do. Okay, in that case, did I miss anybody for the attendee list? Make sure your name's there. Scott, that link you just pasted in the chat, is that something we need to think about or is that? No, it's just me adding headers, that's all. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, did I miss anybody for attendee? All right, in that case, anybody not interested in SDK is free to go, but if you are interested in SDK, hold on a sec, let's see if there's any issues or topics. SDK, I don't see any. Okay, anybody have any topics for the SDK call? Otherwise we will cancel the call. All right, we are done then, both calls. Excellent, thank you all very much. Very productive phone call and we'll talk again next week. Bye. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.